Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to talk about the Arizona real estate market and the current state of our market in October is described as a tug of war between buyers and sellers. Buyers are sitting out. They can no longer afford it. Payments are too high. Houses are out of reach. Sellers, they don't have to sell. So they're waiting. They're saying, well, I, I'm, I'll see if I can sell my home. If I don't get the price, I'll just take it off the market. And buyers are like, well, I'm not buying your house till you give me a deal. And sellers are like, well, I don't have to sell. And they don't. A lot of sellers are sitting on uh, interest rates of 3%, below 4%. And they're like, why do I have to sell? I'm just going to stay put. I'm not going to sell just so I can give you a bargain. So they're going to sell if they have a life event. Divorce, death, job transfer. But there is one segment that has to sell and has been, and that has been the eye buyers. Open Door has 1,500 homes on the market, and they got to get rid of them. Now, how aggressive are they going to get in the last quarter? Probably pretty aggressive. And they have been already. If we look at our price decline that we've had from the peak in May, we're at 6.2%. Prices have come down that far. But it's driven by Open Door. If without their distressed sales that they're trying to get rid of these homes, we would only be down 4%. So that's a very interesting thing to look at. So we also know the consumers have a threshold when it comes to the interest rates. And we discovered that back here in August. Remember when the rates, you know, they climbed up here to like uh, 6.1 and the buyers were out. Well, as soon as they went down to five and a quarter, people who thought they were getting knocked out said, well, wait, I can get in five and a quarter, five and a half. This is an indication that that's the, the tolerance by buyers. If we get down that five and a half range, they'll come back. They won't come back like they did when it was 3%. When it was 3%, buyers could outbid the house. They could mark it up 50,000. Guy, what the heck? It's only 60 bucks a month. Right now, they can't afford the 7% rate that we've got, so they're not about to outbid. Back in when real estate was really cranking, remember, there were only 4,800 homes on the market at one time. And with that 4,800 homes, we had 4,100 contracts written every week. So as soon as a home came on, it went off. You went to the house, there's 20 other people looking at it. It was hectic. Well, now we have 20,000 homes on the market and only 2,200 contracts being written every week. So the buyers that are out there are not going out and looking at two homes and saying, let's hurry up and get home and write an offer. They're looking at several homes over several days or several weeks. They're taking their time. Uh, the I buyers are going to be having a fire sale. Um, so, you know, you need to watch that closely. But the average person is not going to sell unless there's a life event that tells them that they need to sell. And we're seeing a decline here in pending listings. But Getting back to August, see that chart down in the bottom there where it says 5163? See how it spiked up? That was when rates went down to five and a quarter. The buyers jumped right back in. Now, they did last year too. We always get a bit of a seasonal bump, but this year we had this big decline. Then we had the bump. The bump was interest rate driven. Now we're at 7%, and you can see what's happened. Past two weeks, pending listings, they are rapidly declining. And this is our active listing count. A thing to watch when you're looking at active listings now is it it always goes down in November and December. I mean, who who lists their home on holidays, right? So people are going to start pulling their homes off the market in November. I'm not going to have it on the market for Thanksgiving, Christmas. Let's take it off. We'll talk about listing it last next year in January. Well, if this number goes up in November, that's a sign of a very bearish market. That's an indication that people are really trying to sell their homes. Or it could be an indication that Open Door and Offer Pad have more shadow inventory than we thought, and they're trying to dump them. So that's a number that we want to watch. But here's the interesting thing on active listings, the pricing. Why is that not going down at the rate that we kind of expected it to go? This, again, is an indication that sellers are saying, I'm going to put it on the market, but I'm not giving it away. You know, if you don't want this price, that's okay. I like it here. I'm going to stay. That's what we're seeing. The chart is showing us that they came down from the peak in May, but they're just in a holding pattern. That's what I mean by that tug of war. 
But here's another one here that illustrates the result of a tug of war, and that's canceled listings. Like I said earlier, if it doesn't sell, ah, I'm just going to take it off the market. Now that blue line that's way off to the right, that's October. The month isn't done yet, so that's going to be way up here as well. You can see up there, you know, 2,033 homes just said, ah, I tried. I got, you know, I, I, I thought I could get five and a quarter. I couldn't. I marked it down to 510. I didn't get any action. Oh, the heck with it. So they're just getting out. And we're seeing that more and more. And that's what's going on. The interesting thing is we're seeing a lot of price reductions, but it's not a big number. It's, the average is only $12,000. So while buyers are out there saying, I can't afford this house, I can't afford the payment, sellers are not accommodating their desires because they don't have to. Now, if you're in a position where you have to sell your home, you're going to have to have a very attractive price to attract those 2,200 buyers that are writing contracts every week. Now, every buyer out there right now knows that they don't have to offer the asking price. There's no reason for them to do that. And if the seller says no, they go, well, there's another one down the street. That's the market that we're in. And we're at a buyer's market right now a lot sooner than we thought we would be. We looked at the Cromford Market Index, and it's right down there at 100. It's pretty balanced. But the transaction volume is extremely low. And it's that transaction volume of people not buying that is going to affect pricing. As we get into January, February, and March, people have the expectation things are going to be better. But we don't know where interest rates are going to be. And we don't know how soon we'll get back to that five and a quarter to 5.5 range. So all eyes are on the markets when it comes to interest rates. And if it does get back to five and a quarter to 5.5, sales start picking up, but they don't go nuts like they did when they were down to 3%. So do we anticipate getting to 3%? Personally, I don't. So as you're looking at the market, remember that you're not buying a stock. So you don't want to jump in, hope it goes up, turn around and sell it. That's let the investors do that. You're looking for a roof over your head with a fixed payment that you can afford and you don't want to overpay for the home. Sellers, they have no reason to sell. I know I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but that's the market that we're in right now. If they lose their job, if the recession shows up and it's really severe and they lose their job, things are still not going to turn really fast. If you go back, don't compare this market to 2008. Compare it to the late 70s, early 80s. When we had those job losses, we had those rate increases. 2008 was a financial system collapse. And it was also that people had an adjustable rate mortgage. It reset. They couldn't afford it. There was no market to buy them because there were 58,000 homes on the market. They just gave them away. Here, bank, it, it's all yours. So you can't compare today to that because now people are sitting on mortgage rates that are below 4%. Well, what happens if they lose their job? Well, it depends on how many job losses there are. You know, will that affect the pool of buyers even worse. And if you lose your job, in Arizona, we used to only have construction jobs. Now we've got a pretty diverse economy. So it won't have the same effect that we had in 2008 when things collapsed. But if you lose your job, you're going to try two, three months to get another one. And if you don't get it, there's another two or three months where you didn't pay your mortgage. Then the bank's going to get a hold of you and go, we got a problem. So you're at least six months out. So if you have equity in your home, you're going to have to deep discount it to move it. That's to be expected. But it's not going to happen in the first quarter. So from January to March, you're not going to see these huge number of job losses all of a sudden show up in January. And then these buyers all of a sudden have to sell. These things take time. So you have to watch these numbers to see indications if anything's coming. And when you look at those active listings and the price per square foot, it's not showing any desperation. It's showing attempt. So that's going to have to come down before we can say definitively, whoops, sellers are getting serious now. So until we see that, we can't say that. So I hope this helps. Do me a favor, smash that like button, take on the day and have a great week.